Since the beginning of the age of flight, man was, to say the least, groping for a way to get off the ground. He knew it was possible. After all, the birds did it every day. So, he wrapped himself up in a pair of wings, hitched a ride on an early automobile, and darn near broke his neck. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, or break a leg, he reasoned. And sure enough, in this attempt, he flew straight down. And then it came to him. A bird flapped its wings when it soared through the air. That's what was lacking. This took real ingenuity and lots of elbow grease. Now he was ready to go. So he volunteered his mother-in-law to make the first flight. But no dice. The wing flapped all right, but the only thing that took off was his factor. Maybe the woman pilot was a jinx, he decided. So he got a new backer and a new plane. And the wings worked beautifully. But the propeller fell off. Undaunted, he kept the bird-shaped wings, but did away with the flapping. Uh-oh, got to lighten up that nose. By Jove, I think he's got it. Someone whispered in his ear. It might have been Alexander Sikorsky. What about a helicopter? This should have proved to him that you should never listen to strangers. But it didn't. And this time, he actually got off the ground. Of course, he could have almost jumped that high. But still, it was a start. This was known as the Japanese parasol period of early flight. Look at all those moving parts. It took a master mechanic just to get it started. And then it took a miracle to get it off the ground. No miracle this day. Just the vibration that charred your teeth loose. Twin copter blades and a long, thin helicopter came next. It was fine if you could catch it. This was a bright idea. Everyone knew that a saucy balloon would fly. Right em, cowboy. This thing went every way but up. The guy who invented this just knew that it was going to work. It had to work. It was bound to work. It didn't work. Always use the undamaged side as a lawnmower. And finally, there was this brainstorm. If birds could fly with one set of wings, with reason, this baby should fly six times as well. Well, that's the way it should have worked. But somewhere along the line, he made one little mistake. In the meantime, the successful air pioneers, led by Wilbur and Orville Wright in 1903, were paving the way for our modern age of flight. And watching these early flying machines that really did fly, were forced to admit that their appearance and behavior were sometimes as ludicrous as the wacky airplane inventions we saw earlier. But it was the single-mindedness of purpose and perseverance of these early experimenters that overcame all barriers help solve the million and one mysteries of this new science of aerodynamics. In 1909, Louis Blario flew across the English Channel for a famous first. First lady of the air was the Baroness Ramon de la Roche, who made her first flight in 1910. And in 1911, this ungainly looking creation took to the air as one of the first passenger planes. In 1912, a flight over the Alps was attempted and completed. The world gasped with awe. A French 
Frenchman by the name of Pegu performed a series of experiments of rather baffling nature that were finally climaxed by a parachute jump from 300 meters up in August of 1913. The same Pegu was the first man in the air to perform stunts. Here, he's seen doing a few early loop the loop Then came the First World War and the airplane came of age. The next time you watch a modern supersonic jet go streaking across the sky, say a prayer for those early daredevils who paved the way to the unknown wilderness of flight.